Welcome back to Uncensored CMO. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about words. Now, I know I'm usually talking, but actually, we're going to talk about the importance of words and getting them right. What makes great copy? So, in this episode, I'm joined by the wonder woman of words herself, Vicky Ross, who is an expert at brand tone of voice and how to deliver great copy. It's a great conversation and we really get into it. Here it is. Vicky Ross, welcome to the show. Thank you. That's so unfair because I thought that we were off uh, mic and camera and uh, we were just joking around as to what you were going to introduce me as. Well, I, I've had this thing going, I should, probably shouldn't reveal this on the podcast, but but James and I often say the best conversations happen just before you press record. So I said, can we just press record a bit early every now and then and just see what happens? So, oh, right, uh, where the magic happens. The magic happens <laughs> off camera, you see, so you try and bring it in. But the Wonder Woman of Words, I like that. Maybe that'll stick. But um, tell you how to tell me how you got into the, uh, the the job of copywriting that you have today? Like most copywriters, I think, of my age and generation anyway, by accident, um, I didn't know what copywriting was. Uh, I knew that I liked magazines and the adverts in magazines. I didn't know that you had to follow a path necessarily to get to write those things. I got a job as a secretary and a PA and an office admin assistant in various places. And in, in that run of jobs, I ended up as an office assistant at a tiny direct marketing agency that doesn't exist anymore. And I, after a while, realised they wrote, re, well, I didn't know they were called reader offers um, in the national press. I thought they were adverts. To me, that's what that looked like. And I was confident in my ability to write. And so I asked the creative director if I could write an offer. And he said yes. And because it was direct marketing, they could measure it and it performed well. And so I went on to write many more. I thought that that was me now calling myself a copywriter. I was there for two and a half years, I think. I left, I went traveling. When I came back, put myself out as a copywriter, applied to creative recruitment agencies, hoping to get work in ad agencies. No one had ever heard of me. They hadn't heard of the agency that I worked at. They didn't care that I'd written reader offers because direct marketing isn't as sexy as, you know, above the line advertising. I didn't know ad school existed. I didn't know I needed a portfolio. I didn't know anything. So I ended up as a PA at the body shop where eventually after messing up my boss's diary quite a lot, she said, what is it you actually want to do? Because this isn't it. And I said, well, I've been writing reader offers. I really like writing. So she gave me uh, some copy to rewrite and straight away said, oh, yeah, you're in the wrong department. And there's more to it. I won't bore you with the rest of it. But I ended up in the creative studio at the body shop for six years. How brilliant. Well, that's a wonderful story, isn't it? That if you keep on doing what you're good at, eventually, you know, you're going to you're going to get your break. Yeah, well, I think I just told people what I wanted to do. I didn't know that you, you there was maybe a way of getting there. Um, I mentioned going to ad school, but also, I mean, I don't have a university degree, for example. Um, I didn't do any internships or placements or anything like that. I just told anybody that I met that I wanted to be a copywriter and some people listened and made me one. That's a great bit of advice, isn't it? <laughs> and often it's one of those things that sometimes like you don't realise there are jobs out there doing what you love doing and it's, they don't often teach you that at school, do they? No, it's a bit, yeah, if you don't ask, you don't get. But I, I think that's good advice for anything, especially in a job. You know, when people say, uh, I hope they promote me or I hope they give me a pay rise. Well, they aren't lying in bed thinking about you, so you need to tell them. And then it might happen. That's what I think. So for someone listening now that wants a career that you've had and wants to get into copywriting, what would your advice to them be? Well, I think it's a tiny bit different now. So I would probably work harder at getting a portfolio together. And coming up with spec work is quite difficult if you don't have a brief and you haven't got any experience. So I don't know how much DNAD like me doing this, but I always tell people to download the new blood briefs and use those even if you're not going to enter the competition. Or think about who you want to write for. So if it's Nike, for example, take their last TV ad and extend it into uh, a direct mail or a social media post. And then that becomes your, you know, a bit of work to go in your portfolio. And then write to someone at Wyden or someone at Nike and say, look what I did, because this is what I really want to do for you. And then 
hopefully they'll come back to you. Obviously, that sounds very simple and like a quick, easy road to success. You might not get a reply from someone at Nike, but going back to if you don't ask, you don't get, you've got to be in it to win it, right? You do, you do. Which which actually ties nicely into one of my favourite copyrights of all time, Paul Arden, who wrote the incredible book, It's Not How Good You Are, It's How Good You Want to Be, the world's best-selling book by Paul Arden. And I just, I shamelessly borrowed that for the podcast to go, the world's number one podcast by John Evans sort of thing. But uh, that book, he's amazing, isn't he? At really simplifying ideas and, and dramatising them. But it's exactly the kind of advice he would say, wouldn't it, in his book about, you know, uh, you know, you know, you don't, you don't get it if you don't ask. Yeah. And I think there's something in being creative about the whole thing too. So, you know, proving what you've got. And I don't think there's enough stories like this anymore in the advertising industry. But when Graham Fink and his partner at the time wanted, they were junior creatives and they wanted to work. Well, actually, was it Versace? Or maybe he went there later. I don't want to mistell the story, but whichever agency it was, I'll remember as soon as we stop recording. Um, they said, oh, no, you know, appreciate your work. But, and it was nice to meet you, but we're looking for senior creatives at the moment. So they, do you know this story? No, I don't. Oh, no, so they good. left and they went to a charity shop and they bought like uh, a walking stick and a hat and, oh. uh, and uh, like an old man <laughs> coat. And they yeah. went back in dressed as senior creatives and said, we're here for that job. And the creative director couldn't resist Boom. them. And the yeah. creative director was famous. So it's really annoying me that I can't remember who it was and I'll kick myself we, we will check Paul it out Arden. we'll put it in the show notes don't <laughs> worry listener and reader we'll, we'll, we'll make sure it's covered that's brilliant I, I remember when I, I, I did a degree in finance and then decided at the end of my degree in finance I wanted to go into marketing which is a bit of a pivot and more than this, actually, we'll come back to we'll come back to cars as well. I, I I loved cars, right? I was a real car geek, and so I thought I want to be a marketer for the car industry, right? So, and I narrowed it down. I, I think I had my top three brands, and top of the list was Mercedes. So I got the latest E Class press ad, and I photo. This is a long time ago, so I was in the, in the photocopier, and I was like, and I was using kind of um, oh, what's the white thing you 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 had to tip X, you know, you had to kind of cross it. So I rewrote the ad as me. So basically, talking about the features of the car, I wrote it about why I was good for Amazing. the job, and then Vosa copied it, reproduced the ad, and sent it this to them. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, Show exactly. It's this kind of stuff, isn't do. it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Did I hear back? Oh, at least you tried. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> so my, my very short-lived career in car marketing, which is well, probably why I've got a bit of a beef with them, actually. Well, I was going to say it's a shame because... Mm, they, could they, have, they could have used even my 21-year-old yeah, <laughs> attempt at absolutely. a copywriter to help, I think they? the car industry needs some help with Why are car ads so bad? I don't Come know. On. I well, could right. ask the same question right back at you. I have no idea. Is it because there's not much that they can say that's different between uh, models and brands? Or is it that they're uninspired? The people that work there are uninspired because I don't know what it drives me mad. Drives it drives <laughs> so unintentional. Oh, I drives me around the bend. At that, yeah, <laughs> up the wall. Um, it, yeah, it does drive me mad because, and, and this is the same for any big brand with a big product. All these brands have something really interesting to say. They're just not investing the time and energy into finding that finding that thing to say. And I think that's such a shame. And I'm paying more attention to small startups now. Please don't ask me to name any because I won't be able to off the top of my head because I've only just started to pay attention because it always used to be about the big, sexy brands for me. But now I think the smaller brands and the startups, they've got far less people involved in the whole thing. They know who they are, they know what they want to say, and they just go out and say it. But maybe there's too many people in all these bigger brands and they're talking their way into something and then right back out of it again because what they're coming up with is not interesting. Some of it doesn't even make sense. You know, find your tomorrow today or something like that that a car brand Future would say. Future is an attitude. Future is an apparently. attitude. <laughs> Unlimit the more. Yes. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> who knew desire was this and what was the other one? Oh yeah who said design can't excite you oh yeah I, as well yeah okay. i noticed you tweeting on that i did tweet that um because it was a banner ad that came up and every time i saw it i was like no one fucking said that <laughs> <laughs> maybe you did in your meetings but no one on the street is going well i can't even is it nissan that yes yeah yes no one's going nissan you your design can excite us Thank goodness you've come along. I can't even make up a conversation that a consumer would have about that line because it doesn't exist. Well, this is probably, we'll come to, I'd love to come to your tips about this because um, 
part of the reason I'd love to talk to you is, is I, I find copy quite intimidating. And I, 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 I mean, this is why obviously so many people probably employ you. So, but I mean, English used to terrify me at school. I mean, honestly, it, it, if I had to confess to cheating anything, it would be in my English exams or English A-words. Well, I cheated in maths, so we well, there we go. Good, yeah. <laughs> Whereas I did maths in like two seconds flat no and got 100%. Way. It was like easy peasy. But <laughs> English always scared me because I was like, I was always terrified about how to write, how to properly express how I felt was I found really difficult. And um, it's been a really hard journey for me. I remember a couple of years ago, I decided I'm going to have a real go at LinkedIn because I need to build my own profile. So I, I committed to doing a post every single day. It really, I found it so difficult. I sit down and go, right, I've got to say something interesting to the world. And like, oh, I can't think of anything. Or like, or I'd start to write it and go, oh, that doesn't sound quite right. And eventually I kind of, I suppose, found my own tone of voice a little bit. And then um, someone amazing on LinkedIn just did this summary of like people to follow who've got great tones of voice. And she had me as, a, as an example. I'm like, oh, this is a bit weird. <laughs> but um, she called me the leading leading the marketing conversation with muted sarcasm and authority. Lovely. So there we go. So that was quite a proud so moment. So you're better than you think you are. Apparently. Yeah. Although I don't quite believe it yet. And then, and then of course, the next thing that happened, I got a call from Russell Parsons and said, I think you should write a regular column for Marketing Week. So part of me was flattered the other part of me was terrified <laughs> and like okay russell uh, how many words like 1200 words john on a, on a topic that no one else is talking about honestly it was so terrifying i could I, you know i can stand and speak in front of two thousand people and talk about anything write 1200 words for russell for marketing week and i go into a panic i wouldn't be able to do that either <laughs> but i think everything that you've just said is um evidence of why copywriters need a good brief and they also need time in the process because you can't just come up with something on the spot. I mean, you can, but it'll be better if you've had more time to think about it. So you setting yourself the challenge to write something every day, if you don't have something in you that you're you know, bursting with, that you want to get it out and you can't wait, it's going to be a struggle. And if you're setting yourself a brief, that's also really difficult. Write anything, well, where do you start? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is. It, it's, it's the old. There's nothing like the freedom of a tight brief, mm -hmm. as they say, which is which is very true. Um, I mean, actually, one of the things, one of the ways I got around that was actually using the podcast as stimulus for ideas. So mm. what I do is every week I'd listen back to the episode, have with have with the guest, and go right. What three things did I learn? And what and how can I express what I learned in a simple way, sort of thing? And so I kind of train myself to, to do that. I guess like anything that you know, when you put time and effort into it, yeah, and then try and find different ways of telling it, like a quote, and then a fact, and then a, you know, try, try and sort of vary a little bit. Yeah, I, I think lots of people look for a formula in writing, and there are techniques and there are things that we've learned, but there isn't one really. If if I had to give you a formula based on what you've just said, I always say to people. Write at length first. It's very hard to write um, succinctly straight off the bat. So write at length. What is it that you want to say? Almost write a brief to yourself or even like a letter to yourself. So, dear John, today I'm going to write about blah, 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 blah. And then go back through that paragraph and pull out all the key bits that you want to include. Put them in a list. This is just what might work for me. Everyone's different. And then go back over that list and see in terms of hierarchy what you want to say first second, last, and then tick it off like a shopping list. And then that becomes your brief to yourself if you don't have one. Yeah, that's really good. I like that. No, that's, that's, uh, and it make, it kind of makes it less terrifying as well, doesn't it? Because you can kind of get something down and then use that and then refine it, almost experiment a bit and then go, well, what did I like and what didn't I like? But I think people think, well, I write all day every day. So how hard can it be? I can just put myself in front of a piece of paper or a, a blank screen and come up with something. But if you lay it all out like that, then you've sort of given yourself like an instruction or a paint by numbers situation and maybe it doesn't feel very creative but sometimes that's what we need yeah definitely to be well, creative well the only place i found to write my marketing week articles are on long haul flights with a glass of wine so it turned out that's that's been my trick <laughs> so. well uh like a, a steady flow or stream of yeah, consciousness yeah, aided exactly. by wine yeah. i would hate and to the, read what i might write if well, I'd had also, I write i write it put the laptop down give it an hour watch a movie read a book and then open it back up and read it again it's usually like oh i didn't mean that and then <laughs> i can't change it again <laughs> but that is also an issue with writing copy so so, like I said, copywriters can write quickly, but we're better if we have more time. Also, the overnight test, such a luxury, but it's really important. I could write a good ad in an afternoon and then send it off because the client needs it by the end of the day and 
they've given you three hours and that's it. And then go to bed and then wake up with a much better line. But it's too late. So I have to save it for something else. Now, talking about the overnight test, um, I'd love to ask you, um, are there any examples where copy's gone a bit wrong that have kind of caught your eye recently? So, you know, are there any fa- I remember reading the, the book Eat, Shoots and Leaves, which I thought was a brilliant you know, illustration of where, you know, get your grammar wrong can, can lead to unintended kind of interpretations. But anything you've seen where you've thought, oh, I didn't um, quite get that right. Just on the grammar book, by the way, there's the Elements of Fucking Style is a really good book on punctuation and grammar because it's so memorable because it's funny because remembering all where your commas and colons should go is quite difficult. Although in copywriting, you don't need a huge amount of punctuation. Um, I can't think, I'm sure there have been some like real clangers and probably in the world of social media, somebody would have put that all over it. The only thing that comes to mind right now on the spot is I saw a Pepsi ad earlier this week, a TV ad. Unfortunately, I can't remember what it's for or what else was going on in it other than the line that said, we got zero right or Pepsi got zero right, which I don't think is saying what they think it is. No. If I had to guess, they're probably, because obviously Pepsi are competing with Coke Zero, so I imagine they're kind of claiming that they, because the, the, there's the Pepsi test challenge that then their whole campaign is around seven out of 10 people prefer Pepsi to Coke. I imagine they're thinking, oh, we actually got that one right. Not realising that by saying it, they got it completely wrong. Yeah, which is clever, but you need to know that that's what they're saying. And I suppose the line wouldn't be as tight and fun if it was, we got Coke Zero. It doesn't quite make no. sense. So I think it's an intentional play, yeah. but it's not doing what they want it to it's do. It's probably one of the traps as well where they're writing for themselves mm-hmm. as opposed to opposed to writing for the people they want to yeah. talk to. Yeah. I've got a bit of a beef with brands like Pepsi and Burger King. Like, Just stop having a go at your competition or bringing your competition into your advertising. Like, you're just advertising them, not you. And... When you're a big leading brand like that, you have so much to say, so much really interesting stuff to say. Like back yourself. I can't stand it when I work with a lot of really big category leaders. And when they say, oh, competitor did blah, blah, blah. So we want to do that. I'm like, but you're bigger than them. Why are you even looking at what they're doing? I mean, obviously we have to be aware of what others are doing, but we don't then do what they're doing. That's for us to then go, right, well, we'll leave them in the dust away we go with something much bigger and better. And the thing I think people people forget is is most people drink most things occasionally, right? So chances are that anyone that they're talking to probably drinks Coke and Pepsi, right? At different times on different occasions. So it's not as if the customer's going, I have to make a choice between these two. Which is it going to be? Oh, right, now they've just proven that theirs is the best. I'm going to go for that one. Yeah, you know? but wouldn't we want... Uh, if we were Pepsi, wouldn't we want people to only drink Pepsi though? I mean, I you, get what you're you'd saying. You'd like that yeah. to be the case, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure whether that's actually how people... Uh, you're not going to walk out of a restaurant when they go, we've only got Coke. I, I'm not, the... not going to dine here because they got the wrong, yeah. wrong drink. Or the on. famous line yeah. is Pepsi okay, which is I Pepsi love. Is Pepsi okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> clever. Yeah, that is a very clever one. So you said, and um, I, I think recently, that writing copy is easy. Mm-hmm. Now, I think it's really hard. <laughs> so break down for me... How, how, what are the principles of great copy? So writing copy is easy if you know how. Aha, I thought so. Yeah, it's not just writing copy is easy. But also I like people to think that it is easy once they know how so that they invest time and energy into doing it and doing it well. The first thing I think to remember before we do anything is to remember that copywriting is a conversation with the consumer. So this isn't formal writing that we were taught to learn at school um, for some reason. And I do it as well. When we get to work, we sit in front of our computer and our shoulders go up and we go all formal and we say words that we would never really say because we're trying to be professional. But when we're talking to real people in the real world and This obviously depends on tone of voice and types of brands, but in the main, we should be talking as if we're having a conversation with them. And if it's right for the brand, we should even be entertaining them. So yeah, conversational copy, it's not easy for people to do, but once they know how, which is you write like you talk, although, so I'm going to get myself all caught up. There's a narrative that all brands should write how we talk, but it's how the brand talks, not how the copywriter talks. You don't want to hear the copywriter's voice in the copy. And to get to conversational copy, whatever that tone of voice is, 
is to, I say, get real, get personal and get active. And get real is using the real words that people really use. Um, get personal is to talk directly um, and only to your audience, preferably as if you're talking to one person. And to talk more about them than yourself, because no one cares about you, the brand. They want to know what's in it for them. And then get active is the horrible active voice. Sorry, the active voice isn't horrible. The active voice is excellent. I, I hate talking about it. It's horrible to talk about because it sounds like I'm an English teacher <laughs> and I'm not. Um, but the active voice makes everything quicker, more lively, more in the present. The opposite is the passive voice and it makes it copy feel like whatever you're talking about has already happened. So your audience is going to switch off or think, I can't get involved in this. Um, so they're the basics on being conversational. And, and with conversation, I mean, it seems like that we've had this trend ever since Innocent said, hi, I'm a bottle with eight and a half raspberries in. You know, <laughs> we're, all, we're all trying to yeah. create, you know, try to turn our whatever we sell in, into a person. So w w w where are the limits of that kind of approach? Because sometimes it can, it can be a bit forced, can't it, where everything yeah. has suddenly got its own personality. I think it depends on the brand. I personally don't like it when... Um, objects become people so if you're in the asda supermarket at the checkout till and the till isn't working there's a sign on it that says i'm broken like that's too personal for me but the innocent um example it's funny that you mentioned them because they haven't come up for so long in this sort of a conversation that i would have i think we all accept who they are now and as brands are maybe we're savvier to go on and find other ways of being our own version of an innocent without copying them. Um, like Barclays, I remember, did try to copy them. Or I don't know if it was, we're going to copy innocent, but it was around the same time that innocent was so popular. In the window of a Barclays branch, they put a poster on one side um, that said, uh, through these doors walk the loveliest people in the world, which I didn't like. Um, you're a bank, don't talk to your audience like that in my opinion and at the time Barclays was much more corporate and formal than it is now and then on the other side it said as voted for by their mums don't bring people's mums into it this wow. is far <laughs> too personal what you haven't spoken to people what's going on here yeah. um and so yeah innocent has a lot to answer yeah. for in terms of uh, any type of brand thinking I can get away with this when yeah. it's got to be built in like at least with innocent it comes from within and it goes yeah. everywhere i don't know if you've been to their head office they've got fake grass and picnic um benches and even when you go to the toilet there's a um chart to see how hydrated to show how hydrated your we might be and then or you need a smoothie if it's a certain color yeah. uh, so it's in everything and i love that you turn it upside down it says stop looking at my bottom yeah but that's right for innocent. It is yeah. totally, yeah. And and they 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 employ quite a few copyrights, I think, don't they? It's a full time job. Yeah. In, you know, in fruit towers and across all their markets as well. Mm. So they've got the translators there um, who aren't just direct translating their copywriters too. That's the difference. You need a um, trans creator, not a translator, if you're trying to replicate a tone of voice. Mm, good advice there. Um, one of the one of the things I've heard you uh, refer to as well, it, it really really helpful when trying to think about copy is this sentence has five words mm. by Gavi Provost. So uh, explain that a little bit, because I think it's a really, um, this is something actually I, I've learned myself through my kind of LinkedIn kind of writing it, it is to kind of vary how I say it and what I say mm -hmm. to, to create, create more drama. But yeah, describe that because I think that's good advice, isn't it? It's a piece of writing that loads of writers have seen. It gets shared a lot. I share it in all my um, workshops. I always say that everyone should have it printed off and in their notebook or saved on their desktop. I think it's just evidence of how a long piece of writing can flow. So the first two paragraphs are made up of sentences of five words. And as you read them, they become really monotonous. So you can see that you need to vary things up. And then later he adds in a two word sentence and a one word sentence. And then the last paragraph is 25 words uh, in one sentence, which you would think is not going to work. But because of the way he adds in other techniques like alliteration and the rule of three, um, it makes all the copy flow. And all of these things add up to putting rhythm into your writing and rhythm makes your message memorable. I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned actually in, in, in attempting this myself is that you, you sort of you sort of start writing in similar length sentences and writing in a consistent sort of flow, and just by 
kind of shortening things, asking a question, just put it like, like you say, just having one or two words to dramatize something or then putting a space in or starting a new paragraph. All those things suddenly just break it up and make it, you know, cr- create the drama. Yeah. As well, well, we can be, as copywriters, I often say we can be, um, did I say as copywriters? I did, didn't as I? Copywriters, <laughs> as you copywriters, you did. We can be art directors is what I was <laughs> trying to get at yeah. with our words. So yeah, it doesn't have to just be, again, like what we were taught at school, sentences across a page, we can break them up. Uh, I love a one word sentence. I think they can be really impactful. Not everyone gets them. I did write some copy for a client once and uh, I put a one word sentence in and they asked if it was meant to be there. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd just forgotten to, <laughs> you know, not put a full stop or something. We didn't but, get our money's worth <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'd made a point. It was something that they did quickly. So I wrote the sentence and then I did a one word sentence that was fast. So it was like, and we do it fast. Uh, but yeah, she said, oh, I don't think that word's meant to be there. And I thought every copywriter's every word is meant to be there. They know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one bit of feedback not to give yeah. to a copywriter. I can, but I, can I took it out because you sometimes you know which battles you're going to well, win and which I, I you're going to exactly. lose. <laughs> no, you've got to follow the money sometimes. Yeah. Um, another one, actually, colleague my Colin is always refers to is, is the power of a six-word story. And the one that gets me every time was the the, the, the baby shoes for sale Never worn. I know. Oh, so it's like never wow. been worn. Never been worn. Yeah, yeah. you just say amazing. You know, and, and and there's a real power in being choiceful, isn't there, about the words you use, and 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 sometimes working really hard to make less mean more. Yeah, you know, the power of a short sentence over a long one, isn't it? It's, yeah. Well, I love to edit. Um, I always think the shorter the better. You know, we need to be respectful of people's time and interest in us. Um, yes, people will read for as long as they're interested. Yes, people have signed up to brand newsletters or follow them on social media. So they are looking to see what brands are saying. But that doesn't mean we've got their attention for an hour or that we're going to write something long and convoluted and they're going to take the time to work out what it was. So I'm all for short, sweet, to the point and a bit of fun. Now, talking of this, uh, Mm. we set each other some homework, didn't we? Yeah. So you came up with this concept of a copy safari. So explain what it is and then let's jump into how you and I did on the uh, exercise. Copy safari is when I take industry friends out on the streets and we look at work in the wild. And I started it because in all the creative studios I've worked in, you do the work, it goes up on the wall, you all walk around, you stand back, you take a good look at it, you're not looking looking at it on the screen. And when I then started working for myself, I'm not doing that at home on my own. Um, so I started going out and doing, as I said, taking people with me and and we tweet our findings as we go. And I didn't expect people to join in, but so many people join in. I saw that. Oh, I thought this. Oh, what do you think? I've seen this one. Or people go on their own copy safaris. I now take clients and agencies out on copy safaris because it's a different way to learn uh, about branding, marketing, writing. I think it's really important to see things in situ, to consider the environment around where the work is, and to see if anyone's paying any attention when you're standing there staring at it. Are people walking by? Quite often when I'm taking a photo of something, someone is always looking, what is she taking? There's nothing interesting over here. No, no, it's just the poster. Um, But it's, uh, it's, I think it's really important. I have to to confess, having done this this morning on the way in, there was a little bit of a stalkery vibe going on when I did this. (laughs) So I'm going through Liverpool Street Station in the middle. Everyone's rushing to get where they're going. And I'm trying to like snapshot the revolving poster above the train times. And no one knows what the hell you're doing. And I'm getting some funny looks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I, I guess lesson number one is most people are not watching your ad looking no, at your ads, no. which is the sad truth. So, which makes it even more important, of yeah. course, that when you do get their attention, they do something with it. But I've even been over to a bus stop and asked someone to move out of the way. <laughs> I said, sorry, I know this is weird, but do you, could you just move out of the way so I can take a picture of that poster? And he went, it, it is a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so yeah. I thought even explaining that I wanted to take, a, I mean, he didn't know why, but he thought that, why would you take a photo of a poster? But then, I mean, we could then uh, veer off into uh, when posters used to be like ad advertising posters used to be something that you did actually want up on your wall. Put on your wall, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the other the other frustrating thing is how many ads are now in digital posters mm. because of course back in the day you'd have one poster per site, right, and you'd yeah. see the same spec savers ad or whatever it yeah. was. Now, to, I, I glimpsed an ad that I thought was interesting. I had to wait about five minutes for it to come round again. So I had all the other ads going on. And then you've got to like, you know, be concerned with the lighting because on the yeah. digital ones, sometimes they don't, 
the you know photograph very yeah. well, which is really annoying. <laughs> it is, isn't it? There's more to this copy safari than might <laughs> yeah. from my media. Yeah, yeah. I always say to people, you've got to bring a full, uh, fully charged phone. Wear trainers. Uh, don't carry a bag. Like we're we're out for two hours. This is not. Yeah, just... be prepared to wait yeah. for the for the cycle of. Yeah, the, you know, this is a proper exercise quite... that we're doing now. So okay, so talking about exercise, you set yes. the homework. I've taken this very seriously, so I've graded the uh, the posters. I saw I love that you've in. done that. That's so on brand for System One. I know, right? Exactly. Well, I was going to do a fi- System One five star scale, but I thought I should go even more English and go. I've done it on a A to A to E with pluses and minuses as well, right? Because it's giving me like flashbacks <laughs> of being rubbish at school. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's got real school vibes. Let's start with you then. So, what did you see on your way in this morning? I saw, and I've seen it a number of times. Primes bus ad that shows. Um, images of entertainment on the platform and the line is it's right here and I don't like it and I know we shouldn't say if we like something or we don't like something we need to be more um, objective than that of course Uh, so speaking objectively as somebody who specializes in branding and tone of voice and who has worked predominantly with entertainment brands for the last 12 years I think they have far more that they could say it's right here doesn't tell me anything it definitely won't tell a consumer who who if they even notice it on a moving bus i know it's only three words so that's good uh, because it's quick they'll they'll read it or they'll they'll see it if they see it um but but what do they take from that uh, i think it would be much more compelling to say something about the types of shows that are available or how many shows may be or if i really overthink it do they mean and i don't think they do by the way do they mean it's right here on the bus with you. The entertainment is right here on the bus that's with you. Why, that's what confused because me. Because you can watch it on yeah. your phone. If it was it's right here and it's in your feed and you literally click it and it's right here, I'd go, oh, get it, right? It's, it's the yeah. call to action. On a moving bus, I'm left a little bit unsure as to what's right yeah. here. Yeah. And now that I'm really overthinking it, I, and because you said moving bus, I'm thinking the bus turning right. It, it, it's not that at oh, all. Oh wow, I didn't even think that. You're right. You only just gave yeah. me that, but yeah, it's it's not that. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna grade this as a well, like all my school reports used to say, <laughs> could do better. Okay, could do better. <laughs> Very good. All right, where did you what did you see next? New. I thought it was Neurofem, but we discussed this ah, before we, recording. Now this is interesting because we both saw the same poster on the way in this morning. Yeah, but there were two different brands. Yeah. So yeah, which did you see? Well, I thought it was Neurofem, but you've told me it's New Neuromol. Well, I saw both. In the same rotation. Which I've never heard of, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So I saw a Neurofen and a Neuromol ad in the same, they were a couple of posters between them, but they were in the same rotation. Yeah. Looked the same as well. They're both silver packets. Yeah. Same kind of lockups, mm-hmm. similar kind of frame. I, I, In fact, I saw the Neuromol ad, waited for a bit, saw Neurofen and thought, oh, there's two versions of the campaign. This is the di- this is a different execution. So I photographed it thinking it's part of the same campaign, waited a bit, saw it again, went, oh, they're different brands. Different brands, but they must be from the same master brand. Also, I've You'd only so. just realised Neuromol is Neurofen and Paracetamol. Producer, Producer James has got the answer. Yeah, it's, it's a Neurofen brand, Neuromol, yep. and it is... Paracetamol and Neurofen. There we go. So same company advertising complementary brands on the same poster size. Interesting. Because so I saw the, the name looks slightly different. I was like, is that like a ripoff? Yeah, one? Is it, it does look like what you get looked, in it, yeah. Audi. It looks like the Audi version of <laughs> Neurofen. <laughs> but we haven't even talked about the line. What was it? Oh, stronger there, than your... There, there's one new customer system one's not going to win off the back of this podcast. <laughs> Right, let's get to the lines then. Okay. You don't know, actually, because so, often if I criticise something on social media, for example, a brand might come to me and say, we saw you say this about blah, blah, blah. Would you mind? Oh, um, that's a cunning plan, Can we have it? you come in and do a talk? Or So do you pick you the people you're going to work for and then work, work, you know, just dial up the sort of critique? Do you know what? Bit. I wish it was that strategic and that, you know what? My whole career and life has been no plan. Nothing. I don't plan anything. I do what I'm told by a client, but there's no strategy behind anything that I do. Um, it's probably just, true for most of us, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I think um, people maybe try and like retrofit a mm. plan. But yeah, um, yes, my uh, tweeting about brands and ads for some reason I didn't think that anyone would then contact me. I, if anything, I thought it'd be the opposite. They'd be like, "She could shut up." Blacklist her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, what did it say? Um, well, we had two. Oh, we had two, yes. didn't we? So we had Neuromol, stronger than your builder's tea, yeah. versus Neurofen starts to get to work in eight minutes, lasts up to eight hours. Okay. What do you think? 
So stronger than your builder's tea, I really like, but I don't think it's a good line for the product because while we can relate to builder's tea and how and the strength of it, we're now only thinking about the benefits of a cup of tea. So are we saying that Neuromol makes you feel like you've had a strong cup of tea? So it's not a pain reliever then. The other one, there's some numbers. The other, the, other one, the other one starts to get to work in eight minutes, lasts up to eight hours. Now, the problem I had with this one is there was so much copy mm. that I couldn't read it in the two seconds before the poster rotated. That was the thing I struggled with. But there was something about eight minutes is quite quick and eight hours is quite long. So I, I thought the juxtaposition between those two things kind of worked, but it felt too lengthy. It is too lengthy. I would be tempted to go with something, and this is me making it up on the spot, but works within eight minutes, lasts for eight hours. So that's still quite long, but at least it's a bit quicker. Yeah. The starts to get to work in eight minutes. Now, I can hear a lawyer at some point. I, I, I think there's some, like, they submitted it and then had a big Absolutely. letter back going, the you can't say that. The copywriter was like, <laughs> cures copywriter. everything in eight minutes. Actually, and I, bet the it law- was, I bet it was about three sentences <laughs> yeah. longer, actually, yeah. probably. This Headache is the gone in eight thing. minutes and the yeah. lawyer's gone, hang on a minute. Yeah. We can't be saying yeah. that or yeah. anything like that. Um, I worked in beauty. Uh, as I said, I ended up at the body shop and I worked with, so L'Oreal bought um, the body shop in my last two years of um, working there. And in those two years, I worked with L'Oreal's legal counsel and I loved it. I learned so much. So he was amazing because he understood what I needed to do, but I understood why he was there. And a lot of marketing people don't understand what a legal team is capable of when it comes to marketing and are scared of them so they don't bring them into the process they just go with oh we can't say that legal and will yeah. never let us and i always say have you asked them yeah no there's no point they won't let us and that's just mm. not the case it's top advice actually bring legal in early get close to them make sure that they're involved you know otherwise there's nothing worse than right at the end of the process then suddenly talk to the legal team yeah. and go, there's no way you're saying that and then you get a line like that and everyone yeah. goes oh legal got hold of it yeah. at the last minute yeah, we had we had that with Lucas. Say we were going energy beats everything, and then and and then we then got the challenge. Well, does it? <laughs> well, well, no. We, well, we mean generally, you know, like kind of thing. And then, and then we had to put a clarifying statement on it. We mean the universe and your. We had this really ridiculous, like clarifying sentence underneath. That's energy crazy beats because yeah. in my experience of working with does, lawyers, yeah. <laughs> well, no, of working with lawyers, um, I think that they would have uh, allowed that under the term marketing puffery. Which is oh, that's a good guess out of jail. It isn't can it? be upheld yeah. in a court of law, from what I understand. Can it? Is this a thing? Oh I, yeah, marketing oh. puffery is a legal term. I, this is good, so going to come back defense. on me, this is isn't good. it? Ma- breaking but, news, ladies and gentlemen. Well, marketing puffery. The in lawyer a court I of worked law. with said, if it's marketing puffery, then a court of law is going to know that you're making a claim that can't possibly be proven either uh, way, and you're doing it for marketing sake, and you're not claiming for one minute that this is true. That. It actually makes sense of our because I think we I think it's, if I remember energy beats everything the universe is yours and so by almost making that extra exaggerated yes. claim we yeah. were we were making sure that people knew that we're talking so yes exactly ex- we were exaggerating so much yeah. that yeah. you know we couldn't possibly say that drinking this means you can beat your opponent exactly at whatever you yeah know. yeah but having said all of that if you do need a disclaimer that should be in your tone of voice too drives me mad when I see all these terms and conditions that are, you know, suddenly it's like a lawyer wrote them rather than a copywriter yes. and it's completely off brand. Like there is there is ways of making everything on brand. So then you should get your, your lawyers involved in marketing and your marketers involved in law. Let's start an agency there we go. and really mix things up. Marketing and law. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We got it. This is good. This is good. Okay, so number three. Law so what was the third one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> law and out of order. There we go. That's what we'll call it. All right, number three. What's number three? Now, number three, I think Uber Eats. Oh, sorry. On your, on your list of, look, on your safari. Yes. Uh, Uber Eats was just um, something as a tap away. And it was, there were a whole, there was a rotation of them. So it was all different um, uh, restaurants or. Nearby. It wasn't yeah. kind of like, this is nearby, anywhere, anytime or something. No, I think it was, 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 was get anything effortlessly. And I'd love ah. for it to have said everything effortlessly but yeah. legal would have got involved and said we can't get everything but the advert is in a bus uh, stop a bus shelter and i think it looks like even though it says tap away if you're at a bus and you, so we've we're in uh, the middle of town i think if you see that poster you might think 
well, it's also a walk away, the res- restaurant. I can just go around the corner. So it's an av- advert for the restaurant. Maybe That's not true. No, you're right, though, because the, the only, the only time you wouldn't tap is when the restaurant is there, yeah. is near you, right? Yeah. So is that, you're right. It's, it's, it's the, the, the point of delivery is that you can't get there and you're having it delivered to you, whereas actually if you eat proximity, it is around the corner. Yeah then that's the one time you don't need to tap. Yeah, that's I true. think yeah. ads like that are probably better placed in more residential areas. But I suppose more and more people do use Uber and delivery for office lunches and things. So, mm. yeah, I mean, it's fine. It, it wasn't very mm. exciting. It's an information piece. It is. Actually, what I, one of my lessons, apart from you do look a bit stalkerish when taking photos in the middle of the train stations, is actually how many ads I saw don't use copywriting. You know, they, they are literally announcements, you know, yeah. th- this is launching on this date or see this here or, or whatever. So, I mean, less than half, I say, had adverts I saw had any attempt at kind of introducing some kind of copy or thinking. One of the examples you gave when we were talking off air uh, was for a show, wasn't it? You just said something. Yeah, Mul- yeah Moulin Rouge yes. was like, it literally was Moulin Rouge and then the date that it was it was coming out. So I guess a bit like the prime it's right here, it, all you need to know is what's actually on. Although having said that, if there is room for creativity or personality, the Back to the Future show, the line for that is, I think it's book yesterday or something. Oh, that's good. Which is just lovely. And it's yeah. only two more words. Yeah. But I think, you know, budgets are really tight and oh, let's not go into the state of the world, but there's not a lot of money around at the moment. And uh, I suppose for a show, you're trying to appeal to a global audience too. So you don't want to say too much in English maybe or and, you know, have to hire a copywriter to write those words in yeah. English anyway. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Well, let me run my uh, my ones past you and see how you thought of my grading. Okay, so I went the first one I saw, and again, I, I've just I literally just I did this honestly, just what I saw on my journey in. First one was uh, Saver Subs by Subway Eat Fresh. I quite liked it. I I thought this is one that most marketers would think was a bit basic because it was basically bright green background, Saver Subs, Subway Eat Fresh. I thought it was quite Ron Sill. I knew exactly what I'm getting. I'm getting a Subway. It's not costing me a lot of money. Uh, I quite like the simplicity of it. Firstly, there's nothing wrong with Ron Sill. I think getting straight to the point in a straight way, some of us might think it's not creative enough or imaginative enough, but sometimes you need to get a bit of information over quickly and the best way to do it is to do it with the Ron Sill approach. But I want to know... Is it Save a Subs by Subway? Is that the copy? And then there's the Subway logo. Uh, so Save a Subs would be the top third. So big Save a Subs, mm-hmm. uh, a sub shown. And mm-hmm. then at the bottom, Subway, uh, eat fresh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fine. So there was, there was a gap between Save a Subs and Subway. Okay, so we haven't got Subway in the copy and no, then, okay, no, fine. No, but, but the, the Save a Subs was written in the Subway, I think written in the Subway kind of brand. So it did feel like it was all, yeah. all, all kind of all tied up nicely. Well, so you've given it a B plus. I, I went B plus fair. actually. Yeah. yeah, and Eat yeah. Fresh is nice because I don't think Subway has the best reputation for being, uh, you wouldn't think, oh yeah, fresh food at Subway. Uh, <laughs> but Eat Fresh is very straight to the point yeah. and confident. Good for yeah. them. Yeah, I know. I, I, I was pretty happy with that one. Um, next one uh, was Libara Mobile. I'd not heard of Libara Mobile, firstly. And it was kind of a very blue and white, it looked like every mobile phone mm-hmm. uh, kind of provider kind of ad. And then they had in a kind of chatty thing going, no price rises, no blah de blah excuses. I wanted to like it. I didn't like it. And I'll tell you why I didn't like it, because it felt like they were trying too hard without being a brand that I would expect to have that kind of tone of voice. So it felt a bit incongruous and it was quite, it was quite formal ad as well. And then it had the sort of like handwritten bloody blah sort of written over the top. And the two things didn't fit together. That was, that was probably my take on it. I agree with you. I have seen that one. And, um, yeah, the, the fun of bloody blah, which I do really enjoy, you know, seeing those words on a poster, they're, they're just really fun and unexpected, but I don't think they suit the brand. It's so corporate looking that I've not seen them talk like that before, which isn't to say that they can't talk like that now, but they would need a whole big brand refresh to get away with it. You can't just, oh, you know, 
one day wake up and go, I know we've sounded like this for about 10 years, but let's just stick on something cute. That's exactly how it felt. Yeah. 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 Or it's like we've got really strict kind of visual guidelines and then someone's like tried to play around with the tone at yeah. the end. So it yeah. doesn't all, yeah, doesn't yeah. all fit together. Um, I really, I really like the next one. Again, this is, this is, the, I don't think this would necessarily be, uh, you know, making marketing Twitter light up, but I liked <laughs> it anyway. Um, spaghetti, you won't forgetty from Sackler. I just think there's power in a rhyme, isn't it? Because that's, if if I had to pick one that I remember after the end of my safari, that's the one I remember actually, because yeah. it just stuck in with the rhyming simple yeah. and it was the product in, in it and it made me laugh. Well, and we talked about rhythm earlier on, um, which makes messaging memorable and you've obviously remembered it, but there's also something really nice in just the letters, the, the T's, the two T's in each word. I think a copywriter would have been really pleased with themselves writing that. And as much as I love talking away to marketing Twitter, I've got no interest in marketing Twitter not liking something because we have, you know, our own personal preferences for what we'd like to put out there as good work. I think real people would enjoy something like that. 100%. That's yeah. exactly what I thought. Next one is, I was my least favourite of my, and, and this was on the tube. In fact, I looked a bit scary trying to take a photo <laughs> of this when in a very crowded tube, but I decided to go for it anyway. As you'd Can I just say, task. once you've started, now you're not going to be able to stop this now. I know. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, exactly. It's a bit, bit you're gonna. I thing. get so many people messaging me. I've just seen this, thought of you. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to happen now. So don't <laughs> worry. Look out on Twitter. This was from the, for the app Monday. Monday and it said meet your power suite and it had a it had the uh, logos of their various apps I, I didn't know what to do with that I was maybe I'm not target audience but I don't want to meet an app I just think that's a bit weird <laughs> and a power suite is a bit overclaim a bit of an overclaim yeah I'm wondering if and again overthinking it to try and help people out and save them and and be kind in text are they thinking power suite looks like power suit like you would wear a power suit to go to an important meeting I mean, it doesn't quite make sense with what you then get so yeah there was, i think might be i think there it. was like three apps and there were three apps together and it's a meet your power suite it could i mean that'd be a bit clever if that's well i'm really a little bit worried that whoever has written any of the lines that we've talked about is going to listen to this and go <laughs> who are these idiots that don't understand yeah. our advertising <laughs> they but, call themselves experts <laughs> <laughs> uh, but meet your power suite i think anything that's meet uh is just someone trying to find an alternative to say hello to oh yeah and I, like there is there are so many ads it's say hello to your new car say hello to your um grocery shopping say hello no one's saying hello to anything no one wants to say hello to anything and meet your whatever doesn't help you get away with not sounding like that yeah right so, yeah. okay so worthy of its d on my uh, on my <laughs> list okay the last one and i really don't want to like this mm -hmm. but i have to admire it is see it say it sorted Although I have an issue with it because for a long time, I thought it was see it, say it, sort it because it would it. make sense, right? Because it ends with it. But it's only only today I went, it says sorted, not sort it. I think you're What's really late on? to noticing Am this, I late by to the, the part? Is this, so is this a chat late. that's already happened between everyone? Yeah, and then when like, it first came out, everyone went wild. They're like, what? Why have they done that? But I think we go back to legal chat. Mm. Um, I think a lawyer's gone, well, hold on, because we don't want people to think that they're going to sort anything. We need them to realise that if they say it, no, they see it, and then they say it to Oh, us. so it's putting we'll the onus on you to it. sort it. Okay, yeah. so they're t TFL is saying, you see it, yeah. you say it, and you we'll sort so it. No, we'll sort yeah, it. Yeah, but they're exactly, yeah. they're tr trying so to avoid it. So that's why they had to change. Like, yes, ah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> see it, say it, we'll sort it. Yeah. yeah, I know. Oh, anyway. <laughs> but again, I didn't want to like it because it felt a bit, preachy maybe a bit sort of you know formal government service or whatever but it's effective it is effective because it's got effective copywriting techniques in there it's uh three lines and the power of three is powerful uh we for some reason it's sci uh, scientifically proven that we remember things in threes anything more than that we start to get cynical about um claims apparently it's got alliteration in there which helps with the rhythm and it's got another um it's got repetition in there which helps with the rhythm and then it's got another word which i can't remember because i'm not uh professionally trained in copywriting it 
I think it begins with A, and it's where the end of a word sounds the same. So alliteration is for the start. Whatever the other word is, it's got that as well. Amazing. So yeah. a full a full. Uh, oh, yeah. Full Someone house. is getting, uh, got a bonus for writing that, but then had to, uh, you know, go home a little bit sad because someone changed it to so sorted. Sort of sorted. <laughs> someone listening now is going, finally, yeah. they get they it. They understand They get me. my pain. This is what I've been trying to say. <laughs> All along. Yeah. There'll be a book about this at some point. You know? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, listen, that was the, that, thank you. That was the uh, outcome of our safari this morning. Um, taking it out a bit wider as well, what, what, what would be the greatest examples that you've seen of of great copy i mean we were chatting about spotify weren't we you yes. know as well was, was they did a very clever one didn't they around spotify and wrapped about 1984 yeah or ub no was it ub40 yes so then, it was um like 25 or 30 years of spotify or something like that yeah or listening oh, do you know we should even oh no the line was listen like you used to so they were obviously taking people back and letting them know that whatever it was that they were into back in the day is available on Spotify now. Yeah, it's like UB40, 1983, UB40, and then like today or whatever, when it was like UB40. Yes, you know? yes. So it was clever. So it was lovely. Yeah. There was a whole run of them. Each one was good. You know, sometimes when you've got a really wordy campaign like that, you can see some have just been thrown in for quantity rather than quality, but that was not the case with them. this campaign. Uh, it was by an agency called Who, What, Why. Yeah, so that was a great campaign. Uh, simple, quick instant relatable made people feel something and and in a campaign like that there's something for someone you might not get the ub40 one but you might get the london calling and then conference calling i think was the one of the executions and it's similar with there's an airbnb campaign that's been running for a few years now where it is it's real pun fun uh, and i love a pun and i know you know, lots of writers say they don't, or lots of people think they're not supposed to like a pun. But uh, puns, if you if you use them well, and they've got a reason for being there, and they have a product or brand benefit in them, then use them. If they're just there for your own, you know, indulgence, then you're not doing a good job. Uh, so anyway, pun away. Uh, Airbnb, they have got all sorts of uh, categories. And for each poster, they have a different pun or reference that you would get that would relate to that category and I think it's something that could run for years and it has run for a couple of years and I hope that they don't stop it because I'm all for brand consistency and you want people to look out for you and to wonder what the next iteration is going to be and if you change your campaign or even your branding quickly then you know people stop recognizing you. Now You've worked on a lot of campaigns yourself, of course. Um, do you have any favourites that you, you've been working on that you can uh, talk about? A lot of my work is behind NDA because I write brand books and uh, tone of voice guidelines. And to be honest, I'm proud of all of those because to be invited into a major global brand and taken behind the scenes and given the responsibility and the honour to write to come up with a way for them to talk and then tell them how to do that as well and then write a really sexy book that has all of that in it um, is what I'm most proud of, which is a really geeky answer. But in terms of any... I haven't written as many ads as I would have liked, but anything that I have written that's gone anywhere near a television or an out-of-home site or in a magazine, I I know what goes into it. I'm so proud of anyone that gets any work out, whether we like it or not. We might not always like it. Um, but yeah, I I also just like words. I like to see words on things. So yeah, anything that's gone out uh, is a good one. Probably... It's easier to say what I'm not proud. No, I'm not going to say that because then that names the brand. Um, but yes, I have. Oh, I know what you want me to say. I've just remembered. <laughs> oh, go on. What was that? Was the the slogan for when Sky Crime TV channel? Oh, that launched. was clever. Yeah, go yeah. on. That was that was very. I gone. wrote where the truth lies. Um, That's really good. I set myself the challenge uh, for no reason whatsoever, other than to just be creative, is to put two opposite words in a line together and if possible next to each other and so where the truth lies just came quite quickly and easily when I sort of decided that's how I was going to approach it but up and down as well didn't you yeah I so the year before I'd written for dreamland in Margate their slogan which was live it up down by the sea 
Excellent. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I and don't really like talking about um, myself and my work. I'm, I know it's I'm always awkward, always, isn't it? I, know. I always, I never share my work. And your mind goes blank, work. doesn't it? Yeah. Immediately. I always share anybody else's work. I'll share on social media um, and I share it in, I did a workshop yesterday and somebody asked, are all these examples your work? I said, none of them are because, well, A, it's not a vanity project to be, you know, running a workshop and saying, look at all my work. But um, I just like to celebrate any copywriting that goes out especially now when well not now but more recently everyone's a copywriter or so they think they're absolutely not (laughs) well everyone's got ai right so they just type in write me this in the tone of vicky ross right the thing is most people who are doing that wouldn't recognize good copy anyway and they would write it themselves and they don't see the value in a copywriter and if they're asking ai to do it they're not going to know that what they're getting back could be better if it was written by a person. A copywriter, I shouldn't say a person, that leaves it open to anyone. <laughs> Although, <laughs> uh, So you're very well connected in copywriting circles. You've you got your Copywriters Unite team, which I love, a bit of Avengers Assemble kind of feels it, isn't it? Yeah. But um, it, it, is that a fear amongst the kind of your, your, within your tribe, that AI, are you seeing any evidence of it starting to, people starting to, drop the copywriter in favour of using AI? Is that is that happening? Um, probably. I, no one has come to me and said, I've, you know, someone's chosen AI over me as a copywriter. I have got really annoyed with the industry press in the last, well, it's maybe a year now. I think it's really insane and irresponsible to be running articles with headlines, AI is coming for our jobs, uh, AI will take a copywriter's job. It is scaring people we mentioned the times that we're in are really tough right now and budgets are tight. It's almost like it's getting people in marketing perhaps overexcited about AI when it's not capable of doing what we want it to do yet. In terms of copywriting, I do admit there are other uses for it that it's excellent at, of course, but you're going to get a better line from a copywriter. And I know anyone listening to this would go, oh, she would say that, but I, I haven't been proven wrong yet. But in amongst all of that, sorry, just with the press, why are they not supporting creatives and celebrating creatives? Why are they trying? Well, I know why it's, it, you know, it's clickbaity, but I think it's really irresponsible. Mm. And, and if we're, if we're not making the case, then yeah, who is, right? exactly. Yeah. And then, yes, yeah, so on the flip side, uh, so we're recording this in nearly the end of March. I've never been contacted more in, in from you know January to now by copywriters saying is this it I've got no work I've I've never been so quiet wow. um I've lost my job or I have I've lost a client or I'm not getting new clients what do I do and I don't know what to tell people because the narrative is negative out there and uh it's taking a long time to turn it around to the positive I think those articles are going to come where the industry press are going to say oh you know this agency tried AI to write this ad and it didn't your system one's going to test it and it didn't do as well so we need things like that to hurry up well I might have some good news because and I think I've created the ad for you have you for killed this. AI because well yeah <laughs> short of killing AI <laughs> I asked AI whether it's going to replace copywriters. Uh-oh. Right. And then let, let me take the time to read this because okay. I, I think it's I think it's worth it. So I went to chat GPT and I said, Dear Chat GPT, I've got Vicky Ross on the podcast. Slightly awkward situation now, because um, you know, I'm gonna ask her about AI. Um anyway, so I went in and we I, we got we got to know each other a little bit. And then I said <laughs> <laughs> Well firstly I firstly I said uh, I, firstly I said, you know, write write me write me a review of Uncensored CMO with Vicky Ross. And it has you as the host. It turned it around. So it's quite I know I'll show you later. It's, it's quite fun anyway but yeah it got a few bits wrong anyway but actually this is probably the best answer to a question i've ever had on chat gpt and i asked it do you think ai will replace copywriters right and this is what it said it gave me five points number one creativity and emotional connection copywriting involves more than just stringing words together it requires creativity intuition the ability to forge emotional connections with your audience AI, while capable of generating text-based patterns and data, lacks the human touch necessary to evoke emotion. That's not bad, is it, for its first point? I mean, that you even needed to ask AI a question that anyone could have 
told you the answer to is yeah. you know not really selling the benefits of AI in the first <laughs> place. But no, it, yes, that's a yeah. But, it, um, but the, the interesting thing about this is, I asked AI a couple of weeks ago before I was doing a talk about what are marketers most worried about in 2024. I said, what are the big themes in 2024 that marketers should be thinking about? Number one, how to use AI. I'm like, oh come on, please. <laughs> well, that's what I would expect you know? from this because yeah. it's kind of like. You know, are you gonna... you'd, ex- you'd expect it to be self-programmed. Yes, to go, well, it... AI can now replace yeah. a lot of the things yeah. humans used to. It's amazing what we can do in a short space of time. Yeah, I mean, imagine, good on it for being you know? honest. But yeah. yeah, you're not selling yourself because no. wouldn't you be like, yes, AI is going to take yeah. a copywriter's job. Eat there that. We go. <laughs> so number two, a second reason why AI won't uh, eat the copywriter's lunch: adaptability and contextual understanding. Copywriters possess the ability to adapt their style and tone to fit different contexts, audiences, and brand voices. They understand nuance, cultural references, uh, and subtle nuances that AI may struggle to grasp. It's not bad, is it? It's all true. It's all true, isn't it? Yeah. So number three, third point, strategic thinking and problem solving. So here it said, beyond writing compelling words, copywriters can play a strategic role in shaping marketing campaigns and messaging that analyze data, conduct research and employ critical thinking in identifying opportunities and overcoming challenges. While AI may assist in generating ideas, it lacks the strategic thinking and problem solving skills of a human. Very good. I like that too, right? If anything, this is educating marketers on how to work with a copywriter because quite often we're not brought into the whole process and it's helpful if we are. Yeah, very good point, yeah. Uh, Fourth, uh, brand voice and identity. Copywriters are responsible for maintaining and evolving a brand's voice identity across various channels and touch points. They understand the brand's value, personality and positioning and they ensure consistency and authenticity in all communications. AI may struggle to capture the nuances of the brand voice and identity in the same way that a human copywriter can. Very good points. It, when I was listening to you say that, I was thinking about things like when I've been in uh, a meeting with a brand team and we're talking about brand consistency and just the tiny things like use your tone of voice and a call to action button, AI wouldn't necessarily... It wouldn't make that jump, no, would it, to, to no. think about context yeah. in that same way, yeah. But also, I don't believe that AI could create brand or tone of voice guidelines that would then educate I suppose itself <laughs> on how to execute that tone yeah. of voice or brand guidance. Yeah. You can't do that thinking. A final one was human judgment and ethical considerations. Copywriters exercise judgment and ethical considerations when crafting messages, ensuring they are truthful, respectful, and compliant with regulations, like we were saying, you see. AI can generate text based are uh, can generate text based on predefined roles and parameters, but lacks the ability to make an ethical decision or understand the broader implications of the output. Okay, so do I have to like AI now because it's on my side? Well, what I thought you could do is you could create an advert saying this is what AI thinks of copywriting. That's a and really... Just, just just reverse it. Yeah, I think you... Yeah, well, or that's your next LinkedIn post. There you go. You need something yeah. to <laughs> post every day. You can post that one. That's... Uh, okay, I can breathe. That's good to know. Although some people... Because when I have these conversations, you know, I, I say things like AI could never come up with whatever and someone will go not yet oh Oh, yeah yeah (laughs) shut up with your not yet like maybe not yet but like let's just until it's proven yeah let's carry on yeah and the whole um emotion and context and lived experiences and things that ai could not replicate is evident in some of the campaigns that i've seen recently so uh last christmas i think it was pablo Again, I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, I think they put out an ad for Landsec and it was basically a really annoying family getting together for Christmas Day. And AI doesn't know what that feels like. So there's no way they could tell a story that would feel relatable and believable. And then McDonald's, um, I think it was in New Zealand, maybe they came up with a campaign that was drunk speak or late night speak. I don't think they could say drunk. Probably a lawyer wouldn't <laughs> yeah. let them. Uh, and the words are all gobbledygook, but we can work out but, that yeah. they're saying like a cheeseburger in a drunk, slurry way. And a robot or AI wouldn't be able to do that because yeah. it's never been to the pub and got wasted and yeah. turned up at a McDonald's and tried to string a sentence together at two in the morning. And there's behavioural science, isn't there, around when you have to fill the gaps in yourself or where you see a mistake yes. to something? Because AI won't make a mistake. Well, not intentionally but it won't write something intentionally wrong to catch your eye as well. Yeah, like um, Apple's famous light full stop years ahead line. They wouldn't think, they'd say light years ahead, but they wouldn't have the the, uh, intellect to make it two sentences that mean 
similar things or yeah. say separate things. So maybe one last question then to to end with then. What advice would you give to clients working on their brands, tone of voice, some of the magical books that you've kind of pulled together? What what are the tips on kind of clients or or maybe what is the frustration? You wrote that brilliant bland book, which yeah. I thought was hilarious. Like kind of it was one of those things that you go, yeah, I've done that. <laughs> yes. So many people. So I yeah. wrote it's basically what not to do. It's yeah. it's uh it was a parody of so many brand books that I have seen that basically say a brand is human friendly and honest well if every brand is that then no one stands out but also what brand wouldn't want to be each of those things you need to define a personality that gives everyone more to go on Um, and it is funny because either a brand or an agency will come to me and say oh we saw that bland book and um, we've got those so could you come and rewrite it for us or they'll see themselves it it, it was a what not to do that was what it was supposed to be Um, not like really an attack at people just if if that's all you want then here I've done the work for you you can all have this so what can you do to not be bland I think every brand has got a really interesting story within them they just need to remind themselves of it if people in the marketing or brand team haven't been around for very long, they're not very good at looking back and understanding the history of why a brand was created and how far it's come and what are its successes. Um, and there's so many rich things that you can pull out. We talked about Pepsi and they get zero right. There are so many amazing things that Pepsi could do and say. I don't know why they bother thinking about Coca-Cola so much. It's mm. boring. I think it's really exciting to get behind why a brand exists. And to pull that out in a in a series of stories that could last forever. Uh, so you need to work out what your story is. That would help define your personality and who you are and how you want to show up and tell those stories. And then that obviously then filters down into how your voice is going to sound. Brilliant. Amazing. Vicky, thank you so much. Top advice. It's been really thank good you. fun. And I look forward to another copy safari. Yes, we have to do it in <laughs> we'll real life. We'll do round two yeah. in real life. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening or watching Uncensored CMO. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do hit the subscribe button wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching, hit subscribe there as well. I'd also love to get a review. Reviews make a big difference on other people discovering the show. So please do leave a review wherever you get your podcast. If you want to contact me, you can do. I'm over on X at Uncensored CMO or on LinkedIn where I'm under my own name, John Evans. Thanks for listening and watching. I'll see you next time.